Uh, okay, so yeah, that that that's not right. My God. What's wrong with this photo? Well, simply, the first two artists have 50 and 40 million streams a month, respectively, while the fourth artist has less than half a million. There should be mini artists in that fourth album spot instead of the artist, which I'm going to call Fruit Music going forward. You may think this is a special occasion, but the artist and its associates, which we'll go into later, have been in the top 10 albums on my page for the last couple of months. This isn't a fluke. Now, about its associates, when I originally saw this element artist, uh, I thought they were related to Coco Melon, which is a not great YouTube account, which makes subpar animation shows for children. But that's a different video, and as far as I can tell, it isn't true. But once you enter the driver hole, uh, you realize there's a lot going on. Uh, this isn't like a simple scheme. There's a lot of a lot of moving parts on here in here. Uh, there are four correlator owned fruit music artists, kind of fishy, but I believe they also own eight other accounts. This is only what I could find, and I promise you there's probably a lot more, but doing a little bit of research, we're talking only like five minutes, five, ten minutes, this is what I was able to pick up. Because so there's, there's a lot of stuff we had to get into, so I couldn't spend too much time just counting up accounts. Now, the funny thing is that each of these accounts has features that lead back to other accounts. That's how I was able to find the, 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 like the eight or so I found already. Um, why this is interesting is because both parties should, in theory, get paid for this song. Because they're featured on so both uh let's say this man makes the songs so it is artist one artist two would also get the same amount of views for that same song so they're in, in um essentially doubling their profits by just adding in a future to an account they already own as a feature on one of their songs which i don't believe they have any uh correlation with is nito ona ona i believe I'm, I'm trying to pronounce that right uh who is an actual artist so the company is branching out and this um now, uh, this leads to more uh, drastic consequences as you go on farther into it because the fact that they're reaching out to actual people knows that people in um, Spotify know what they're going on or other artists know exactly what's going on. So there's people out there outside of the business that are informed and it'd be really interesting to have an interview with one of them. And if we get this video out to enough people, maybe we can get an interview going. That'd, that'd be very interesting. So you may be thinking, well, Fruit Music just has its grip over Spotify which is not exactly true. This is a multimedia endeavor. Um, you can find fruit music on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Specifically, YouTube is interesting. Uh, they made a music video, they make music videos here as well, and they make uh, animated music videos, which are pretty good, which are pretty good, but uh, then you get uh, some animated music videos like this. Yo, listen up. Here's a story about a little guy that lives in a blue world And all day and all night and everything he sees uh, editor, editor me here, I guess Um, yeah, that That is the entire clip, there's nothing more I was checking to see if I deleted anything No, that is the entire clip Um, I'm just as confused as you, but they made it they, That was something on their channel Yeah, well, that that speaks for itself Pretty lately, they released this video, another anime music video, for an app on the App Store. And I'm going to be uh, showing you guys some gameplay of the app right now. The video itself has 1 million views, but the app only has 24 views on the App Store. It doesn't exactly add up unless the app completely flopped. That being said, I don't think it did. I think there's something else going on here because 1 million, grand, let's take that, say like 1 in 10 people download it. That's 100,000 people downloading the game then. There'd be more than 24 reviews. It's not very hard. And these aren't like written reviews. There's just people clicking how many stars they want on it, which 1 million does not correlate to 24 whatsoever. On YouTube, they have uh, six channels as well as one, which I believe is the owner's channel, actually. On Instagram, they have an account, and it's pretty normal. Facebook is the same, 
but uh, they get like three likes per post. So they're not exactly giant there. And I don't have Twitter or TikTok, so I don't know what they're doing on there. Uh, but due to the fact that TikTok is a music-based app, you know, people are listening and dancing on there. I would assume that they're bigger on TikTok. Not quite big. So I'll get into their tactics and how they get big, bigger later. But I, I, I do think they're a lot bigger on there than they'd be on Twitter. Now we're going to get into something a little bit more interesting. Under the albums on Spotify, the record label is Strange Fruit, which is uh, normal enough. Um, but when you look into Strange Fruit, uh, if you like Google it, the first thing you see is a song by the same name by uh, Billie Holiday in 1959. In 1960, a record label opened called Strange Fruit Records, uh, which distributed BBC Records. BBC One is a popular British radio station with some big names associated with it. They were um, in charge of just distributing the actual albums, okay, or the actual records. That was their job as the record, record label, yeah. Uh, but BBC is a decently big organization. We're not talking about something small here. This is very very large. A Strange Fruit Records is credited with uh, helping over 80 artists and bands with their projects. In 2004 though, the record label was merged with and closed by BMG, a record label who owns the likes of Wu-Tang Clan and R. Kelly. So it's another bigger label. So how can this no longer existing record label be associated with Fruit Music? When looking into the owner of Fruit Music, he had no uh, seeable connection with the owners of Strange Fruit or anything um, correlated with that, like the BBC or anything. This leads me to believe that they're just using the record label as a cover for the fact that they don't have a record label, or that they brought the Strange Fruit name after they closed. The current perceived owner of Fruit Music does have some history. In his YouTube bio, it says he worked with them, a certain YouTube music group. This group is extremely large on YouTube and um, has many outreaching channels. This leads me to believe that the entire Fruit Music Group as a side endeavor used to focus more on the Spotify side of music because the, um, the group on YouTube had a very tight grip over YouTube. They wanted to push it more off towards Spotify and realize that the owner could help them do it. And with that, they built the alias of Fruit Music and their other channels. Yeah. Now let's talk about how Fruit Music is using the uh, Spotify algorithm to build as much money or gain as much money as possible. With simple tactics like that, honestly, I could do it, you could do it, anyone can do this stuff. They say in their bio that they started off their account by making playlists, which is uh, very simple. Anyone can make a playlist on Spotify, but they had built it so that, um, it, well, they, they started to gain traction, more or less, okay? Once the playlists had taken off and they had built up trust, they started making music. Now, these songs were short. We're only talking like 30 seconds, and which we'll get back to why this is later. They then started pulling, putting, they then started putting their songs in the playlist and removing other artists to the playlist everyone was listening to was just their music. So they built up this playlist as a, like a good roundabout way of just hearing other people's music, lo-fi stuff. And then they basically pushed that all stuff out, put their own music in there, the playlist, and they already had people listening to it. So they built up an audience before they even made any music. Now their form of music was picked very specifically, lo-fi and sleeping music. These two genres of music have listeners listening to the music in the background. So they end up listening for uh, large amounts of time to the, the same artist or the same music. Especially the sleep music. The music doesn't turn off once you fall asleep, so there's eight hours of listening time for a single artist. Now each of these songs is only about 30 seconds long on these accounts. This is because you listen to much more songs in an eight hour period if they're shorter, which will make them more money in turn. Listen to a two minute song, you only get one song in. But if you listen to uh, 30 second songs, you get four songs in at the same time. So that's four times the profit right there. Plus, we already discussed how they were using the feature system to bring in more money by using their own creators as features and hence doubling their money or tripling it. So most people then, they click on the album and they listen all the way through because they're sleeping in bed. This is uh, helps boost their album to pop up on that number four spot because when I listen to a normal album or a normal artist, I can't listen to a couple of songs from the album. I don't listen all the way through. I pick out the ones I want to listen to. I have to make a playlist of the specific songs I want to listen to. Those songs get the views, but their entire album does not. Which Fruit Music realized and made their album extremely short so that, in the way it's set up. So people, when they're sleeping, they listen to the entire thing through. They're not just stopping at one song. They're not picking out one song because all the songs are pretty much the same. They're listening to one album long song 
so then the el album itself gets pushed forward so that the individual songs get pushed forward as well. And by being pushed forward, I mean they're getting out to more people, which then keeps it moving forward. And that's how you get this um, very basic album by an artist with less than half a million followers or um, listens per month to be the fourth biggest album. That being said, they only need half a million listeners because each listener may listen to up to eight hours a day, which is drastic. No other artist is pulling in time like that or streams like that, that consistently for that long. All these factors together and you get the idea that the owners of this account aren't doing anything inherently wrong, but instead making money by abusing a broken system. I personally admire them for this, um, so I was actually just editing this and I, I was thinking about this and my la my latest video kind of flopped So I, I officially decided that I'm gonna follow in the fruit music's uh, footsteps And I am officially quitting YouTube now to make just music Um, so I got for you guys right now just a sample of one of my songs It's supposed to help you guys fall asleep. So I want to know what you guys think about it Please be honest if they help you fall asleep, you know, I might this might be something in the future Bye.